All right. Welcome everyone. Today is Communion Sunday. Just give you the heads up. Go ahead and get all your items together so that we can have a good time in the Lord. Just waiting for everybody to log on to Zoom and then we'll get started. Those of you who are listening, go ahead and share this with someone so that they can be encouraged as well. All right. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning, Tisha. Good morning, Alicia. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Alicia, are you able to open us up in prayer this morning? Yes. Thank you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Father God, for bringing us here together, Lord God, that we would lift up your name, Lord God. Father God, we, we thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord God. We ask that you would forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, we thank you for just the, the, the opportunity to come together connecting through Zoom. Lord, we Thank you for prophetess, Lord God, that she's bringing forth your word. We ask that you would bless her, Lord God. We ask that you would cover our internet services. Lord, we ask that you would open up every heart and every mind to receive what it is that you would have us to receive today, Lord God. And Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to give us, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I touch and agree with that prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place as we worship you, Father God, in spirit and in truth. I pray, dear God, that we would just lay aside anything, any concerns, and then we just go ahead and focus on you, Father. We're in your secret place, Father God. We're at your throne of grace and mercy where we get to just worship you, Father God, to spend time with you. I pray to God that you go ahead and just like open up our ears, Father God, open up our, our eyes, our hearts, Father God, help us to be like David. David said, I have become even more undignified than this. Help us, Father God, to just who go all out and worship unto you, Father God, today without any restraints, Father, help us to be free with our worship. I ask for your angels, oh God, to be dispatched. I thank you, Father God, that we will not leave here the same way we came, that you're doing a whole new thing for us, Father God, and we receive it in advance. We empty ourselves out, oh God, so you can fill us up today. Father God, let our cups overflow with you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
Father God, we worship you on repeat, Father, in the name of Jesus, and we will not stop, Father. I pray to God that you would just set us ablaze even more, even more with your spirit, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you would reignite all of us, oh God, that you would take us deeper, you would take us deeper, Father, that your word would be fire in our bones, that we will offer up our bodies, our lives unto you, Abba, as a living sacrifice, oh God, holy and acceptable and pleasing in your sight. That's our reasonable act of worship. And so, Father God, Help us to maintain that passion for you, Lord, and never stop worshiping you. Never stop hungering and thirsting after your righteousness, Father God. Father, you promised to fill us up until we overflow. And so, Lord, we're asking that you set the whole house on fire. We're asking for Pentecost, Father God, to be released upon all of us today in the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, we thank you. Father God, you said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Father God, you said, then you will hear from heaven and you will forgive us, Father God. And you said you will heal our land. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father God, for the message, even through the song, even through the song, Father God, Jesus was always escaping to go somewhere to pray, Father. And so I thank you, oh God, that you already told us that men are to always pray, that we're to pray without ceasing. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are stirring up our fires again, the fire on our altar, Father God, where sometimes we're going through different things and it, it seemed like the fire was trying to go out. But Father, I thank you for reigniting the fire, oh God, on our altar. So, Father God, I thank you for the flames, oh God, that's behind our prayer lives again, Father God. I thank you for setting us on fire for you. I thank you that your word is fire in our bones, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you that we are your house of prayer. You said my house shall be called a house of prayer of all nations. And so Lord, you are big on prayer. Father God, even that's part of the armor is praying for the saints. And so Father, we thank you for the word that you're getting ready to release onto us today. I pray dear God that you will take over, that you will speak Holy Spirit, that you would say what you need to say, Father. I decrease so that you can increase in me, Father God. We all decrease. We all decrease right now, Father. Father, so that you can increase in the name of Jesus. Lord, make us a house of prayer in the name of Jesus. We're going to destroy, Father, continue to destroy every stronghold. Father God, anything, any lies of the enemy that's, that he's been speaking, that's kind of been putting water on, our, on our, 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 our prayer lives. Father, I thank you that the strongholds are destroyed. And like you told us last week, we can change our minds. And so maybe some of us, our prayer lives, kind of got weak because God didn't answer when he, when you thought he should have answered you and you started to pull back a little bit with your prayers. Today is the day that you need to reactivate your prayer life, re recalibrate your prayer life. That's what you need right now. It's the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man that avail it much. And so our prayer scripture today is James 5 and 16. And so it says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. It's the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth much. And so that's James 5 and verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Do you need healing? God is telling you what to do. And it's not just always physical healing. Sometimes you just you need help healing in your marriage with your children. Sometimes you need you need healing in, in you know, your, your walk with the Lord, whatever it is, your finances. And so God is giving us a key right here. You want to write this down. Find someone that God has placed in your life, a, a godly divine destiny helper. You're not going to talk to everybody. Those who are assigned to you, assigned to bless you, not to tear you down. Those who were sent to, to, to fulfill Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. So God said, my plans, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And so God is going to place somebody in your life where you can confess, right, your faults one to another. And pray for each other so you can receive your healing. And God says, because it's the effectual, you got to be fervent with it. Fervent with your prayers. Now is not the season. Now is not the time to pull back. You got to ask God to give you more fire in your prayer life. Because prayer is, is a big weapon against the enemy. It's part of the armor. And so that's how you're going to get your breakthrough. Jesus was always praying. Amen. And so that's, that's part of the message for today. So let's continue on and see what else the Holy Spirit is going to say. So last week, we cha changing our minds. We're, we're focused again. We're going to continue to build on the solid rock and not be distracted. We're not going to build on the sand. We're going to build on the rock. Amen. And so this press multivitamin also um, coincide, co it connects with what the Lord is saying today. 
And so I'm going to press play. It's called War Room. And if you watch this movie, you know that it was prayer, right? That made all the difference. I'm talking about praying the word of God. Amen. You looking for your breakthrough today? You need to make sure that there's fire in your prayer life. You have to make sure you have the faith to believe and to keep on. You can't give up. You can't, oh, I'm too tired to pray. Prayer is a weapon and it's a key to unlock the promises of God over your life. So go ahead and pick up back your prayer life, okay? And we're gonna keep on going. We're not gonna stop. So let me go ahead and press play and then we're gonna continue on it. This is our press motor vitamin. Mm. Whew, if you watch that movie, you know, prayer, don't think light, you know, lightly of prayer. Whew, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. And we can destroy him, y'all. Christ already destroyed him, but he's trying to come in your family. You have a weapon and it's called prayer. <laughs> and this message is for the prayer warriors today. You've been praying and maybe you feel like the, the character in this movie where you're like, you know, I'm praying, I don't see anything. You know, God is like, pray again, okay? Pray again. God's gonna give you fresh fire in your prayer life. Because when you pray, things change. It does. I've seen it happen in my, in my life. Listen, actually how I know, okay? So I pray that you were motivated by that um, prescription, well, you know, the first word of vitamin. All right, so let's start with the word advocate. So the Holy Spirit told me to write this down, advocate. Prayer warriors, this message is for you. You've been praying for everybody, everything. You've been their advocate, advocating for them. What's an advocate? A person who argues for or support an idea or plan peace. It's a person as a lawyer who works and argues in support of another's cause, especially in court. We go to, to the Supreme Courts of Heaven and we pray for people all the time. You didn't know that you were like an advocate. Yes, the Holy Spirit said you have been behaving like an advocate and God getting ready to bless you. God's getting ready to bless you. Listen, it says in Ephesians 6, 18, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. That's why the enemy is trying to destroy your prayer life. Because prayer is a weapon against him, right? And it's going to make you get your breakthrough. Ask me how I know. Okay, praying the word of God and fasting works every time. And so the, the Latin word from where the, um, the word advocate comes from, it means counselor. It means counselor. And so when we pray, when we intercede for other people, right? It, you, you try to persuade them to, you know, to forgive someone or whatever. You, you, you step in the, in, in, the, in the gap. You go in the middle. So it's, it's, it's God over here. And then, you know, you have you and then you have the other person. You're in the middle praying, interceding for them, begging for God to bless them, advocate in their case, like, you know, call, crying out unto God on their behalf. And, you know, you've been doing this for years. You've been praying and then and, and, and you're not seeing any changes and the enemy is trying to tell you to, to stop praying. And God is reminding you today to keep on praying because it's the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man that avail it much. And there's something so prophetic for, um, to, to the prayer warriors and the, and the intercessors, it, if you only knew, it's, it's, it's tied back to Jesus, it's tied back to the Holy Spirit. And so when you begin to intercede for people, when you, when you start to pray and to advocate for them, God, God is like, oh, that, that's, that's a pleasant smell in my nostril. It, it's, like, it's like smoke going up, the, the smoke of the frankincense going up to God. And it reminds God of Jesus. It reminds God of the Holy Spirit. We are behaving like how God wants us to behave when you advocate for other people, when you begin to pray and intercede and pray the will of God over their lives. That's why the enemy is coming and trying to attack you and telling you to stop praying. God is saying, keep on going. I'm listening to you. And he sent me with some examples for you. He sent me with some examples for you. When you read about the armor, it says, and make all supplications for all the saints. What is supplication? The action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. So we're not praying one time and that's it. Oh, I'm tired. No, boo-boo. You want to get your breakthrough? You got to do it. You got to keep on praying on repeat. 
You got to continue, listen, to press in every single day like the woman, listen, like the, the persistent widow. Remember her? The judge kept on re 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 rebuking her and rejecting her. She kept on going back. And what did Jesus say? Wow, I wish I could find some faith like that in the earth. And he said, men ought to always pray persistently. Don't be sitting here talking about, oh, I give up. I prayed, Alicia, right? Oh, I prayed. I didn't see anything happen. So, you know, let me just walk. No, 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 no. It's the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man that avail it much. God is going to answer you based on the word. That's why we pray the word of God nonstop. Keep that fire burning. God's word is fire. Listen, Elijah prayed on Mount Carmel. Prayer. From Genesis to Revelation, you see prayer is a whole weapon and a strategy. Listen, Elijah prayed on Mount Carmel and God answered by fire. He prayed also for rain and God sent the rain. Are you ready to go? Okay. Let me show you what this looks like. Persistent advocate. Keep on praying for that spouse. Keep on praying for them children. Keep on praying for your coworkers. Keep on praying for yourself, right? Keep on praying and don't stop. In Genesis 18, 25 to 33, we see a perfect example of persistency in prayer. And so God is getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember Lot last week, how Abraham put him out and he pitched a stent right there close by Sodom? Mm hmm Because he shouldn't have been with Abraham anyway, because Lot had a different mindset. He pitched his tent near Sodom. By the time we get to Genesis 18, he living up in Sodom, right? And the person who he was arguing with before is the one who's getting ready to pray for him, pray for his deliverance. The same one that he was arguing with, okay? And so it says, Abraham began to intercede, began to advocate for Sodom and Gomorrah, even though Sodom and Gomorrah was wicked. And it says, surely you wouldn't do such a thing, Lord, destroying the righteous along with the wicked. Why would you be treating the, the righteous and the wicked exactly the same? Surely you wouldn't do that. Should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? And I, I was blown away, victorious ones, by Abraham's boldness. I was like, oh, he said, should not the judge of all the earth do what's right? So it's like he's saying, God getting ready to do something that's wrong. And I'm like, have you no fear of the Lord? But the Lord sat there with um, Abraham and was in, engaging with him in a, in a whole prayer. This is like intercession going on for a wicked place called Sodom and Gomorrah, where Abraham is bold and, and, and confronting the Lord humbly. It says, and the Lord replied, if I find 50 righteous people in Sodom, I will spare the entire city for their sake. Whew. Okay, so Abraham exhaled. He's like, all right. Then Abraham spoke again. Since I have begun, let me speak further to my Lord, even though I am but dust and ashes. Suppose there are only 45 righteous people rather than 50. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And the Lord said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 righteous people there. Oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. We keep on going. Then Abraham pressed his request Further, this is where you need to be, victorious ones. Genesis 18, 29, press your requests even further like the persistent widow. Don't be backing off. God wants to engage in the conversation with you. He wants to talk to you. And so he said, suppose there are only 40. And the Lord replied, Tisha, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 40. And Abraham could have went on and said, all right, Amen. No. Verse 30. Please don't be angry, my Lord, Abraham pleaded. Let me speak. Suppose only 30 righteous people are found. And the Lord replied, I would not destroy it if I find 30. Then Abraham said, Whew, since I have dared to speak to the Lord, let me continue. Suppose there are only 20. And the Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. Finally, Abraham said, Lord, please don't be angry. Please don't be angry with me if I speak just one more time, one more time. Suppose only 10 
are found there? And the Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of the 10. You see how God wants you to come and intercede for the people around you? And he will spare them because of your persistency in prayer. And, and the Lord replied, you know, I won't destroy it. And verse 33, I thought it was very cute, Tisha. It says, when the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham, he went, he went on his way and Abraham returned to his tent. Because Abraham knew God heard my petition and he went home in peace. He didn't go home scratching his head, still terrified. No, he had a great prayer session with the Lord. And if Abraham had continued to talk, God would have st stayed there and listen. Because God wants you to talk. He said, come boldly to my throne of grace and mercy. There's help for you in the time of need. My grace is sufficient. Don't you stop praying for that person. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I know you were wavering back and forth. No, you ask and you shall receive. It's the seeking part and the knocking. Because we some people ask and you walk away because God didn't show up on the, on the first or the second or whatever. So you walk away or you start wavering. No, you gotta continue to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that you need will be added unto you. You gotta keep on knocking until the door is open, continue to press in. Like the woman who used to have an issue of blood. Listen, she kept on going trying to find healing. And guess what? She found it in Jesus because she didn't give up. The moment you give up, Satan won. Don't let him win. Keep on praying for that thing that you've been praying for and do it on repeat. Why? Because I found me a cute little verse that I think you're going to like. It says in 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9, the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. And the Bible also says that his ears, his eyes are on the righteous. God's eyes are upon the righteous and his ears. He's listening to you. Keep on talking. Keep on bringing his word back to him. He said, my ears are attentive to their cry. And if God is going to spare 10 or whatever amount of people that's in nasty Sodom and Gomorrah, is your situation that bad? Is your situation that bad? Sodom and Gomorrah, where there was fire and brimstone, but God made sure he delivered Lot and his family, sent the angel to deliver them. Come on, prayer warriors. Keep on praying. Don't you stop. Let's keep on going. For those of you, you're starting to waver a little bit. You're like, oh, there's a story in Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. Another powerful example of persistent advocacy, somebody who was a prayer warrior. So, listen, this story is intriguing to me because it shows me that when you pray on behalf of somebody else, God will answer. So I'm like blown away. The same thing with Moses. When Moses was on the mountain and his hands were lifted up and he was up there praying and Aaron and Ur was holding up his hand, God helped Joshua and them down the mountain. Listen, your prayer, it can change everything. Your prayer will change mountain, move it from one spot and put it in the ocean. Okay, so it says, leave in that place. Jesus, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman, from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Now the Canaanite, not even, not even an Israelite, they have, they're serving other gods, right? Don't matter. She heard about Jesus and she going to him. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. She ain't even going for herself. Prayer warriors. God getting ready to blow your mind, y'all. Moses, Abraham wasn't going to God for himself. Neither this woman. This woman is going to Jesus on behalf of somebody else. Her child. Her child. Mm. When you're praying for that person who looked like they're wayward over there, not doing anything, God hears your prayer and begin to work on your case. Even though that prodigal is all the way over there, God is still working on, on that situation. Even though it's not the prodigal that's praying, that's a level of grace and mercy that we can never fathom. 
And so don't be distracted. Don't be deceived. You can pray for somebody and God will move on behalf of your prayer. Don't you stop advocating for them. Don't stop. Look at this mother. She's going to Jesus on behalf of her daughter. What did she say? She said she's suffering terribly. So put yourself in this situation. What are you suffering with? What's, what's going on with your situation? Who are you bringing to Jesus? Whose name are you bringing to Jesus? And so she crying out to Jesus, Tisha. And we, thought, we, we were told that Jesus is nice. Jesus turned around and supposed to answer you right away. Jesus did not answer a word. How many of you praying? You're like, I, I don't hear anything. And to make matter worse, the disciples came to him and urged him, send her away. She keep on crying out after us, send her away. At that point, many of us would have walked away. I'm done. I'm not dealing with this. What? She's not going to embarrass me like that. <laughs> you ain't even speaking. You need, what? No. It's, it says, Jesus said, I was not, I, I was not, I was not sent only. You see, what is it? He said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. So I wasn't sent to you. I wasn't sent to the Canaanites. I was sent to the Israelites, which is true. He started out with them. But the woman in verse 25, she came and knelt down before him. She's like, okay, y'all ignoring me. Y'all telling me to go away. And then over here, you're telling me you wasn't even sent to me. At that point, many would have walked away. She humbled herself and she knelt before him. And she didn't care what he got to say. I know you have power. You have authority. I heard about you, Jesus. I'm coming to you. I'm not going to stop. My child needs some help. And I can't help my child. Only you can help my child. So you can call me whatever name you want to call me. You can, you can do whatever. I'm not going anywhere. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me. And at that point, you think Jesus would be like, okay, she kneeling down. Okay, all right. And, and then he turned around and said, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. In other words, the, the bread is for the Israelites. The, the, this is all for the Israelites. This is for the, the, the children. And we're not going to give the, the food to the pets, to the dogs. Almost describing her as a dog. And so she said, yes, it is, Lord. It's, it's, it's right. It's right. You want to know why it's, you want to know why it's right? Because I'm humble enough where I'll take the crumbs but I need a breakthrough for my child. She said, yes, it is, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. I'm coming to you, Lord, like a humble puppy. Father, I, just give me the scraps, just give me, but I know you're able to do it. I've, I've heard about you, Jesus, and I'm not going away. I will not let you go until you bless my soul. I'm gonna be like Jacob right now. And then Jesus, Tisha, said to her, woman, you have great, Faith, your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. And then the Lord said, remind them of Isaiah 62 and verse seven. The Lord says, give me no rest until I complete my work concerning you. Go ahead and read it for yourself at the bottom. Don't give the Lord any rest. You saw how Abraham kept on going? You see how this, this, this woman came night serving other gods and doing whatever? She heard about Jesus and she came and she was not going to give him any rest until her child got her breakthrough. And what happened? Jesus said, man, you have great faith. Do you have great faith, victorious ones who are listening? Because over here in Acts 14 and verse 9, Paul was preaching and there was a man who was paralyzed. And the Bible says, Paul looked at the man, looked at him directly and saw that he had faith to be healed. And the man was healed, got up and started walking. You need your faith. Activate your faith. Merge it together. Connect it with your prayer life. And give the Lord no rest until he does it. That's what Isaiah 62 and, and verse 7 says. Give the Lord no rest until he completes his work. So why are you being persistent again? Because God's going to answer you. The persistent widow, that evil judge, it was like he gave her what she asked for. And he was wicked. We serve a good God. 
And he said, no good thing will I withhold from you. So you got to keep on going. Don't get in your feelings. Don't let the enemy trick you with them strongholds. You keep on pursuing the Lord. Keep on being persistent, asking him over and over on repeat. He said, give me no rest until I do it. Did God finish doing what he promised you already? No? Okay, so you need to keep on going. Then don't stop. Don't let your faith waver. Keep advocating for those children. Keep on advocating for your relatives. Keep on advocating for your spouse. Of all people, your spouse, the two shall become one flesh. That's the other part of you. Don't you ever stop. You keep on going. And God said, I'm going to answer you. And I'm going to show you great and mighty things that you don't know. You ready for the next story? Okay, I'm glad you said yes. Because I'm ready for this story. The final story of an example of a persistent advocate prayer warrior. There's a story in 2 Samuel 21, 1 to 14 of a woman, her name is Rispa. And Erica tried to call this out earlier. Erica was on point. Erica, where you at? All right. And so it says there was a famine. There was a famine, Joanne, during David's reign that lasted three years. So David asked the Lord about it. David going to pray about it, right? There's a famine, the people are starving, the suffering, whatever. He went to go find out why. And the Lord said, the famine has come because Saul and his family are guilty of murdering the Gibeonites. Remember Joshua and them made a covenant with them that they wasn't going to destroy them? Well, you know, Saul wiped them out, tried to wipe them out. And so now there is backlash. There's a famine. So the king summoned the, Gibbon, the Gibbonites and they were, it says they were not part of Israel, but were all that was left of the nation of the Amorites. The people of Israel had sworn not to kill them, but Saul in his zeal for Israel and Judah had tried to wipe them out. So in verse three, David asked them, what can I do for you? How can I make amends so that you will bless the Lord's people again? David trying to make, make it right with these people because they was illegally touched. They were, not, they were not supposed to be attacked because of the contract and covenant that was made. Now there's a whole famine because of what Saul did. Saul. And they said, well, money can't settle this matter between us and the family of Saul. You can't buy, you can't buy your way out of this. This is so spiritual, right? Neither can we demand the life of anyone in Israel. So what can I do then, David asked? Like, what could we do? Just tell me and I will do it for you. Then they replied, it was Saul who planned to destroy us, to keep us from having any place at all in the territory of Israel. So let seven of Saul's sons be handed over to us and we will execute them before the Lord at Gibeon on the mountain of the Lord. We're going to make this right. We're going to make this right. Give me seven of his, of, of his sons. Okay. And then, and then, okay, we can talk, right? So that, that, that's, that's the payment for what was done to us. Ooh, child. And so the Bible said, David said, all right, I will do it. Remember Jonathan and David were best friends. So Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, he was spared. He wasn't going give, to give him up. He said, the, the king spared Jonathan's son, Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, who was Saul's grandson because of the oath David and Jonathan had sworn before the Lord. In verse eight, but he gave them Saul's two sons, Armoni, which means belonging to the palace. These are prince, y'all. These are royal children. He gave them Saul's son, Armoni and Mephibosheth, whose mother was Rispa, daughter of Ai. Hucha. He also gave them five, the five sons of Saul's daughter, Merab, the wife of Adriel, right? So two of Rispa's five grandsons, okay? And the men of Gibeon executed them on the mountain before the Lord. So all seven of them died together at the beginning of the barley harvest. That was the payment. Rispa got caught up in the middle of it. They took her sons, right? Took this, took them. Mephibosheth means one who destroys shame, end of shame. She, 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 this is, she named her children good names. Her name means peace together, cooking stone, coal, cooking stone and hot, hot stone. 
and her father's name means vulture. And she's getting ready to see the vultures be released upon her family. Right there, she saw it. What does she do in response to that? Her name means hot coal. Lord, make me a house of prayer, right? The fire piece together. Only God can put your broken pieces back together. Only God can destroy the shame and end the shame. All of that. Only God can take you from Lord of Bar and put you in the palace. What does she do in response to her children being killed? The Bible says, now this is the beginning of the harvest. Rispa, daughter of I, the mother of the two men. Oh my goodness. Doug, the Bible said she got some burlap. You know, burlap is what you put on when you're fasting and praying. Hard material. But her kids are already dead. So what, what, what is she up to? What is she up to? Mm, what is she up to? She got the burlap Tisha and she spread it on the rock where her children were killed, were hanging up, killed. And the Bible said she stayed there the entire harvest season. You know how long that was? About six months. She spread the burlap. Burlap is like that hard fact, the hard material, nothing soft. She spread it like how, like how, how um, Jake, Jacob did in Genesis 28, 18, when he laid on the, on the stone and the whole revelation broke through. She put the burlap on the rock and stayed there the entire harvest season for about six months. And she prevented the scavenger birds from tearing at her children's body, the dead children's bodies during the day. So she's out there and she's fanning away, right? To get away from them. Fanning away the scavenger birds so that they would not tear her children's flesh, the, the bodies. And that's during the day. And I kept on reading Joanne and I'm blown away that she also stopped the wild animals from eating them at night. So from morning, morning and noon and night, whatever, this mother is out there driving away scavenger birds from her sons who are already dead. Is your situation dead like that? She out there for six months, fanning away the scavengers. And when David learned what Rispa, Saul's concubine, had done, he went. He had to respond. Six months, out there night and day, he had to respond. And so he went and gathered the bones of Saul and, and Jonathan. And in verse 13, the Bible says, so David obtained the bones of Saul and Jonathan, as well as the bones of the men of the men the Gibeonites had executed. And then the king ordered that they bury the bones in the tomb of Kish, Saul's father. Okay. And it says, after that, this woman was there six months. How long have you been praying for your situation and your situation ain't even dead? She out there six months. After that, David was blown away by her response that he went and got the bones and God ended the famine in the land. Because when you're persistent like that in your intercession, the famine, the famine situation that you're dealing with will end. Now she's over here protecting dead bodies. And you mean to tell me that many people won't even do the same thing for their, for their loved ones that's alive? It's time for us to reignite our prayer lives, y'all, and be like Rispa. She was advocating for dead bodies. So you know what? I'm motivated like her to endure during the hard times, the hard seasons, because I know that God's going to turn my famine situation and give me my response. Only thing she wanted to do was to let the world know my sons were innocent. They didn't deserve to be killed like this. But it's their father that made this happen. And I'm going to advocate for them. I'm going to protect their bones. Listen, she gathered the, the dry bones and, 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 and David had to bury them. That's all she wanted was some respect for her children. Now, we can learn a lot from her. Advocating for things that's dead. I don't care if your marriage look dead, y'all. Children look dead. Situation look dead. You, you fly, listen, fan away any kind of scavenger that would try to come and try to devour what's left. Because last time I read in the book of Ezekiel, 
God is able to, listen, God is able to take the dry bones and do something great, turn them into a vast army. So learn from Rispa. Keep that fire burning in your prayer life. And I don't care what people tell you. Oh, it's dead. It's hopeless. No. My God gave me some promises. And he said, I'm going to reap what I've sown. And so prayer warriors, don't you stop. Keep on going. Because you have been behaving like the Holy Spirit, who's our advocate, because you have been behaving like Jesus, who's also interceding for us at the right hand of the Father. God is so impressed with you. Six months out there in, 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 in that hard place that was very uncomfortable. And this woman was not going to stop until David did what was right concerning her son. All she wanted was for them, for their bones to be taken out, for them to be buried properly. Listen, we're not asking for death. We're not asking for burial. Our God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond that. He said we will not die, but live to declare the works of the living God. And so we have an advocate who's praying for us in the sense of you didn't know that when you was over there advocating for your family, God was advocating for you. The Holy Spirit has been praying for you, making intercession. Jesus has been praying for you. And the Bible said when Job prayed for his friends, God turned his captivity. And the message to you is the prayer warriors, you've been tired. You've been going through it. God said, don't you stop. I am coming. I'm turning your famine situation because you've been persistent like the persistent widow. You've been flying away the scavenger of suicide and destruction. You've been squatting them all of the wickedness. You've been praying against all of that. And I'm coming to see about you. I'm getting ready to turn your captivity like I did for Job. I'm giving you twice as much that you had before. And, and your situation didn't even as have bad as risk. For, but she was willing she was willing for dead bones go all out for six months it was worth it to her is your family worth it get back on your knees and you you hit those bugs or flies or whatever it is those birds of discouragement and poverty and debt and lack all the generational curses you squat them you hit them because god said i'm turning your situation i need for you to keep on going I need for you to keep on going. I'm breaking through in your situation. It's the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man that avail it much. I need for you to not get tired. You need to get some muscles in your faith and be like Rispa. Don't you give, I will not let you go, Father God, until you bless my soul. God is impressed with that level of praying. He's impressed. He has been impressed with you. And I'm just a messenger sent to tell you, get your cloth, get your victory banner, get that word in your hand. And you begin to squat anything that's coming to challenge what God promised you. God said, those are joined together. Let nobody put asunder. You better go ahead and hit that vulture of, of divorce and separation. Whatever it is, but the rebellion, God said, your children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. So when you see that rebellion and that witchcraft coming, you got to stop. Get, in the name of Jesus, you rebuke that thing. You bind it. You have the keys of the kingdom. Don't you sit down and let the devil beat up on you whisper didn't care she said i'm gonna get down in that uncomfortable place on the solid rock out there for six months in the famine and and god was so impressed with her that god turned her situation and the coolest thing about it only god could have turned only god could tell you when to take the dead bodies down so david must have went and prayed and inquired of the lord and god was so moved by rispa that he said david go ahead go ahead and gather her children because God is impressed with your faith. And she made it in the Bible, y'all. Her story made it in the Bible to go ahead and encourage all of us here who've been waiting on the Lord. You over there advocating for other people. But God said, I'm advocating for you. And this is what he told me to tell you. Okay. First John 2, 1, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the tone and sacrifice for our sins and not only to ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. And in John 14, 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remain, remind you, excuse me, remind you of everything I've said. 
So you have an advocate in heaven advocating on your behalf. While you're over here praying for everybody else, God is praying for you. The Holy Spirit is praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. Amen. And in Romans 8, it tells us in verse 27, because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And so you're praying on repeat. That's like the Holy Spirit. You're behaving like the Holy Spirit. You're behaving like, like Jesus. Amen. And in Romans 8, 34, it says, who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ died. Christ who died more than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. And so don't you stop going. Don't you stop praying for the situation that you're praying for. Amen. Keep on going. God's going to restore you. When the widow helped Elijah over here in 1 Kings 17, listen, God said her food never run dry. You keep on, when you treat people right by praying for them, God will take care of you. Keep on going in the name of Jesus. And God says a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Prayer warriors, it is your season to be refreshed. God getting ready to turn your whole famine situation. You have not seen anything yet. And the scripture that you want to go and listen to and read on on, on repeat is Proverbs eleven twenty five. What does it mean to be refreshed? It says a generous person will prosper. God's getting ready to prosper your marriage, prosper your spouse, prosper your children, prosper your health because you've been praying for everybody else. And God said, I'm coming to see about you. I'm interceding on your behalf. Listen, I'm helping you. I'm getting ready to refresh you on a different level. What, what does the word refresh mean? Refresh mean to restore. God is getting ready to restore the years. The palm of worms ate up in your life. Those of you who are feeling tired, God is resuscitating you, rejuvenating you, and pumping you up. That the prayer request that you've and given to God. God said, I've already answered by fire. I'm getting ready to open up the floodgates of heaven over your life. I'm getting ready to pour our blessings upon you that you have no room enough to receive it. I'm going to answer by fire concerning you. I'm impressed with your faith. You did not give up when everybody told you to give up. You did not give up and I'm getting ready to reward you because I told you without faith, it is impossible to please me because they that come to God must first believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. My answer is yes. Yes, the promises of God through Jesus Christ are yes and amen. Yes, I'm going to do it for you. Yes, I did it for Rispa. And all she wanted was her dead, the dead bones of her children. I'm doing greater for you. I'm doing more for you. The same way I helped Sodom and Gomorrah, I helped Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm helping you, victorious ones, the prayer warriors. God didn't forget about you. You didn't give up and God's getting ready to reward your faithfulness. The Bible said when Job prayed for his friends, his friends got their blessings, but God turned Job's captivity and gave him twice as much than he had before. Don't you ever give up on praying. It's the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man that avail it much. You keep on behaving like God. You've been made in his image. You keep on advocating for everybody around you, praying for them, making intercession for them. And God's going God's to see about you. And your cupboard will never run dry. God's going to make sure he shows up and shows out in your situation because God's word will not be mocked. He said, you're going to reap what you have sown. Listen, God will never be mocked. God said it in his word. That's what he's going to do for you. And you over there praying for everybody and God not going to bless you. He is not an unjust God. He is a just God. He's fear. He, listen, he's a fear God. And he's not going to forget the works that you've done to bless other people. And he's not going to forget about you. He's going to help you and your whole household. And I cover this message with the blood and there will be no backlash or retaliation keep on being an advocate for your family keep on praying and fasting listen and god will show up on show he will show out in your life ask me how i know and that is the word of the lord for you today keep on fanning away the scavengers let nothing destroy the promises that god gave to you not not even you yourself not even you don't let yourself do it stay in that posture of faith and praying and trust in the Lord, and he will do it for you in the name of Jesus. And Tisha, you can come on. Oh, child, Lord, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Wow, amen. Lord, I thank you. Man, what a full mm. sermon. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you. Thank Father you. God, we thank you for coming mm. to talk with us this morning. It was so amazing that you showed us how Abraham mm. was 
speaking with you and he would just ask me what if there's you know 50 40 30 20 and you talked with him and then um, you went on your way and your word said this one in the powerful scripture your eyes look all over the earth for those who want to do your will and so we are so grateful for these powerful examples and lessons lord god um thank you Lord Jesus. and it's just amazing we are so grateful to you mm. um stacy can you please put up the communion thank you lord jesus mm. now is our sacred time thank you lord jesus and during this time we want to take a moment to encourage you to examine yourselves before you eat the bread and before you drink. Because those of you who drink and eat without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on yourselves. This is a sacred time to us because Jesus died for our sins. On the night, um, Jesus taught us how to take communion right before the communion judas put his hand in the same bowl with jesus and jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed and the thing about jesus is that he was such a teacher so he wanted to teach us something he wanted to teach us how it's done so if there's anything in your heart, any unforgiveness, any burdens, um, or someone that you need to get right with, um, abstain from communion. If you have already asked for forgiveness of your sins, and if you have already tried to make amends with people, um, we encourage you to go ahead and take communion. Um, but Jesus taught us what to do. There was, there was Judas Iscariot on the same night where he told us how to take communion, who he, he forgave. Jesus mm -hmm. let him know, I know that you're going to betray me, but I forgive you anyway. Mm -hmm. And Jesus still took communion with him. And that is the grace that we have. So this opportunity to take communion today is God's grace on us. Even though we're not going to get it right, even though we're not perfect, even though we sin, he still sent his son to die for us. And Jesus showed us. He didn't just tell us to go and forgive others. In that very same setting, Jesus forgave someone who betrayed him and continued to eat with him anyway. Mm. And so we highly encourage you to examine yourself before communion. So 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 29. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please take bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Drink. Forever, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ 
eat and drink judgment on themselves. And we'll just take a moment to reflect. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for today. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the woman of God. Holy Spirit, thank you for uh, coming and speaking to our hearts. Father God, we thank you for your son. We thank you for um, him dying for our sins. And we thank you that we are covered in the blood. We ask you to forgive us. We repent, Father God, of our sins. And as we go about our week, we pray that this message would continue to be food. We pray that this message would continue to feed us and you would bring it into our minds to encourage us. Your word says that you look all over the earth for those who are trying to do your will and you're looking for us. And so we see in your word how you spoke with Abraham and we see that you wanted to commune with him and talk with him. And so we receive that, Lord God. We thank you. We ask for everyone who was in attendance today, if you would place a hedge of protection around them and their families as they depart from service today. We ask that you um, continue to protect the woman of God and her family so that there will be no backlash or retaliation. And we pray that um, the prayers that are ushered up to you, Lord God, that people would be encouraged that you are working on their situation. We thank you and we praise you. If you're here today and you are a Christian and you feel far away from the Lord or you feel like you just can't get it right or maybe you're battling through um, depression and you just don't feel like yourself and that's keeping you from the Lord. Um, whatever it is in your heart and you just feel that it's keeping you from the Lord you can get back in his will. You can come back into his grace. He makes it very easy. All you have to do is repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I know I am a sinner in need of a savior. I believe Jesus Christ, your son, died for my sins. And right now, I turn from my sins and return to you, Lord. Amen. And it is done. If you're on this um, prayer this morning and you have never been saved and you've been feeling the calling and the Lord has been speaking to you prior to today, or if he's speaking to you right now and you would like to give your life to the Lord, it's also very easy. All you have to do is repeat these words. I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus as my personal Lord and savior and I believe in my heart that you, Father God, raised him from the dead. So now I am saved. Thank you for saving me, Father, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you said this prayer, you are saved. If you said this prayer, you are now a Christian. And we encourage you to go into a Bible-based church. Don't be alone. Link up with believers. Read your word. And if you're looking for a church home, please reach out, email us at jeremiah2911church at gmail.com and someone will get back to you. And now for the benediction. Number six, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. Be amen. blessed. Amen. Amen. Where's Erica? Erica, are you on here? Erica, you could unmute yourself. <laughs> So earlier this week, Erica started tapping into the RISPA story. <laughs> I was like, Erica! <laughs> okay, so Erica, yeah. um, how, uh, how has the Lord blessed you today? What are you walking away with today, Erica? Just make sure to 
be persistent and stay before God. And no matter what, know that God is providing, protecting, and sending help. Yes. And um, the enemy cannot have my family or those attached to me because God gives us the victory. Yes. And I'm, I'm grateful for this ministry. And I'm grateful that God is growing me in this ministry because it's, it keeps helping me get on my knees, stay on my knees, stay in the word and pray and, you know, thousands of notes <laughs> all over. <laughs> so many notes with scriptures, you know, Amen. we're blessed because they didn't have what we have today. Mm -hmm. But just seeing the things that the people in the Bible went through and that Faith, they had crazy faith. Yes, yes. And God provided so much. Mm. And, you know, I'm going to continue to be like Rispo. When the enemy was like, it's over. It's this, is that. The enemy, you're alive. Well, mm. that part may be whatever. But I'm going to still do my part as a wife, as a mother, as a prayer warrior, as an intercessor. Yes. And I'm going to trust God for God's will to be done in every area of our lives, mm, you know, man. and I was so grateful when I heard you was like, you know, you know, pray and stand on the word. And that's exactly what I was doing last night. <laughs> that's exactly what I was doing last night. I was, I think I went to bed at five, six. <laughs> Listen, come on. Rispa was out there six months. Come on, Erica. You sound, you sound like you're Rispa. <laughs> <laughs> yes and that that is amazing six months mm -hmm. yes the whole harvest she was out there mm -hmm. and whatever the weather was you know, hot cold rainy whatever she was out there yes. and that just shows the dedication that we need to have for fighting for the provision and the protection for our family and for god's will to be done Come on now. Yeah. That's how we need to be seeking the face of God. Because mm. it's not about the stuff that's here today and gone tomorrow. But our relationship with Abba, mm. that's eternal. Come on now. And so a lot of people, including myself, at first look at it was she was doing it for her sons. But she was doing it for that. But God mm. grew it and made it for her relationship with him. Mm. And, and Erica, look at the people who, who, are, in, who are in the story. Because sometimes we feel like we're not qualified, right? We have right. Sodom and Gomorrah, right? We have Rispa, who's a concubine, you know, and all that stuff that go, who was married to crazy Saul. You know, we have a Canaanite who worshiping other gods. But these yeah. are all people, you know, that went, like, as far as like Abraham went, went to God on behalf of a place that yeah. was so corrupt, you know? Risk mm -hmm. was like, mm, God, you the children are precious. And she yes. displayed that even when her children were dead. Like, yes. no, I know that they came through a concubine, but they're still worth. They, they, they have worth, they have value. And I'm gonna intercede for that. And they were dead. Exactly. Exactly. Erica, we don't have that going no. on with us. Our children yeah, are, are talking, are talking. <laughs> I ain't gonna say what they're saying, but they're alive. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and yes. so if God did that for her, right? Come on, y'all. And we're under the, the dispensation of grace. God said, I'm going to do it for you too, y'all. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This Hallelujah. week, you and can't tell me so. nothing. Yes. And yes. even more and praying and, and yes. just look at examples in the Bible of those who prayed. And yes. God turned the captivity of Job. So we think yeah. we're praying and praying and praying. There is coming an end of the famine, y'all. This woman was out there for six months and God be. ended the famine. Your situation has an expiration date. Yeah. Don't you expire before you get your blessing, though. Don't you expire. Yeah. Keep on yeah. going. This week, turn up the fasting, turn up the praying, and watch God respond. Because God will not be mocked. God's word will not be mocked. So your marriage, your children, your health situation, your business, whatever look dead, learn from Rispa. She was willing to become uncomfortable to get her breakthrough. 
Amen. Jacob Amen. wrestled with God all night. Yes, he, he said, did. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, honey. And we're not even going to let go when God bless us. We're going to keep on going. Amen. This belongs to me. These are my yes. children. This is my marriage. This is what God yes. gave to me. And I'm not going to sit there and let the devil rob me with my eyes yes. wide open. Not with yes. all that word we know. We know too much Bible, y'all, and have too yes. much faith to sit there on the side of the road acting like we don't know what to do. Bust out your 40-day fast. Bust out a 40-day fast and do that. Because praying and fasting oh, will move the mountain. Yeah. If faith the size of a mustard seed could move the mountain, all of us on here got bigger faith than that. God said, you, MC, you have not seen anything yet. I did it for Rispa, and I'm going to do greater for you. Greater. I received my portion. I changed my mind, y'all. Last week's sermon, ooh, we all were renewing our minds during the week, right? Right. I agree with God again. <laughs> Just in case I was wavering, Lord, I trust you again. I'm repenting. I'm changing my mind. I had a whole dream, Erica, last week where there was a there was a, a, a woman, there was a fire in a building, and she in there, Erica, Tisha, dragging out the people out the building, going in there with the, the fire blazing to pull out the people. And somebody had to go in there and rescue her. That's a true example of a prayer warrior. You in there yes. praying, and God said, I got you. She wasn't even thinking about your, herself, Doug. She wasn't thinking about herself. She in a burning building, pulling out the bodies, saving the people. And that's what everybody who's listening to me, you've been doing that, rescuing people with your praying and, and helping. And God said, I'm coming to see about you in the dream. Somebody else came and rescued her. God is God has not forgotten the prayer warriors. He's yeah. coming to see about you. And he just wanted me to come and tell you this. He's coming to see about you. He's coming to rescue you. All of you who've been given CPR and you have an you have an asthma issue going on with you, a whole asthma attack, Erica, and you over here giving mouth to mouth, praying for people when you're struggling yourself. And God said, oh, I've never seen faith like this before. Our faith has impressed the Lord. I, I'm just a messenger. Hallelujah. Go over there doing compressions and blowing and you you have barely enough breath in your body that <laughs> level of sacrifice and god is like let me go get erica real quick let, 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 let me go get your air real quick expect it this week expect <laughs> it on your behalf he see he saw you when you didn't have enough for yourself tisha but you made sure somebody else had it now you think god whose eyes are all over the earth looking around you think he's going to ignore Tisha, who's over there sacrificing? That's what it is, sacrifice. Risk was sacrificing and got a breakthrough. The, the Canaanite mother, that was sacrifice. They call her a whole dog, <laughs> okay? And was ignoring her. But she kept on going, and her child was delivered. And Jesus was impressed with her. God is impressed with your faith and your faith alone. Keep your faith and keep on trusting God and keep on praying. And God is coming to see about you. You will not burn up in that building, boo-boo. The same way you help other people, God is coming to help you. He will not forget all that you've done for the kingdom. And he's going to bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or imagine. Don't you be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap a harvest if you faint not. I don't know who this is for, but sometimes you feel like you want to give up. It's, it's so much. Don't be weary. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You pray for everybody else's children. God said, you think I'm gonna let your children go by the wayside? It might look like that. But you see how the prodigal son came back home? Your children are coming back home too. In the name of Jesus, I restore families. My son came with a ministry called reconciliation and I'm reconciling your family. I speak it out of my mouth as God's apostle. God is restoring your family. God is reconciling your family back to him in the name of Jesus. He said, it's not my will that anybody will perish. Even Sodom and, Sodom and Gomorrah, y'all. Sodom and Gomorrah got, uh, got delivered from there. There's nothing too hard for God. He's able and he will do it for you. Don't you give up in the name of Jesus. I don't care how bad your prodigal's acting. I don't care how dead it looked. Lazarus was in the tomb for four days. Christ was in the tomb for three days. And all two of them got back up. Come on, valley of dry bones. All of them stood up on their feet, a vast army. 
God is opening up your graves and God is setting the captives free and you will not watch everybody else celebrate and you suffer. No, after you've been praying, <laughs> uh, no, you're taking part, you're partaking in the celebration. You are partaking in the celebration. Psalm 126 will manifest in your house. Ask me how I know. They that sow in tears shall <laughs> with songs of joy carrying the harvest with them. You keep on praying and praying and praying, there is a reward attached to that. And it's gonna go down to a thousand generation in your bloodline, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise your holy name, in the name of Jesus. I gotta speak it out because God said my angel respond to my words. And so I'm releasing the word of God over you. In the name of Jesus, I watched God raise a whole man who almost died. God raised him up and he's sitting right here, healed. There's nothing too hard for God. If God can help Rispa, he's going to help you. You have to believe it though and speak it. Speak it out your mouth. Get the life in the power of your tongue. This woman sent a clear message. I'm going to go up on this rock with my burlap. And I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. You will not devour my children's flesh. They belong to me. They did nothing wrong. Them curses got to go. And she broke the curses, y'all. The famine ended. God was so impressed that God sent David to her. And to, to, to say, okay, take them down. Because only God can give you the permission to take down those bodies. Because it would represent the, um, the curse. Right? It, it, that was the payment. But we have Jesus who was hung up, y'all. Come on. Jesus was hung up on that cross. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. You understand? We have a greater, a greater portion. We're in a new covenant, y'all. God's grace, he said, I'm waiting for you to experience my true grace. You're getting ready to see the favor of God on your life like never before. In the name of Jesus. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Come boldly to my throne of grace and mercy. Everything that you need, Joanne, is right there in my presence. And you're going to go like Rispa, like the woman with the issue, you still have an issue of blood. You're going to press. You're going to keep on pressing and, and beating down every Jericho wall. Anything that's coming to challenge the word of God, you got to fight back even when you don't feel like it. It's not about your feelings. It's about your faith. The just will live by faith in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, I can go all day, y'all, just like this, talk about God. But you get the, you get the message. You get the message. Don't give up. This is a week coming up right here. Buckle up the whole armor on you and expect God to move on your behalf. Listen, I'm getting ready to fast and pray this week so I can see it for myself as well in the name of Jesus. Yes, somebody said the enemy has been caught and the captives are set free in the name of Jesus. Then he sent a whole man who was in prison. The man said, young lady, I was pardoned from prison. Now, if, if, if a man can pardon him, and God made sure I was in the right place to hear it. He said, they pardoned me and released me from prison. <laughs> Who else is God setting free? Every captive. God said, I'm setting your captive loved one free. Right? I've come to set the captives free. And he whom the son, has, and this is for Angela, Angela. And he whom the son has set free is free indeed. It's free indeed. Everybody else on here. He whom the son has set free is, is free indeed. And Satan can't hold them. He can't hold them. He must release them in the name of Jesus. And God is working on your behalf. So God is able to go deep down. His word is able to go deep down into your loved one's marrow. The Bible said God caused the prodigal son to come back in his right mind. God did that. Why? Because the father was over there praying. All you got to do is be like Moses. Hands up, keep on praying that word and never stop. And the Amalekites will be defeated, period, point blank. That's what it is. God said it. And his word would not return back unto him void, but it will be accomplished. God's word will be fulfilled in your life in the name of Jesus. We'll be blessed, victorious ones. And we will do this again in the morning. Bye, everyone. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.